Good morning. It is uh, this is Mo, your urban amateur gardener from Houston, Texas, USA, and this is a April 2012 garden tour. It's actually starting to look a lot like the picture, the plan that I drew. And that's the that center circle, and you can see there's all sorts of different textures and uh, colors around the square and. Uh, walk in through the gate and just show you some of the beds and you can see the beds and there's the atrium the house More beds. We still haven't planted beds on that far side and I'm not sure we want to it's a lot of work taking care of a garden three beds here So we got rocks all the way around the garage and This nectarine tree it actually died I thought a morning garden tour would be better, the light would be better. And there's the two compost pits. And you and oop, on the side here, those cinder blocks, this is the back of the garage. There's garlic growing in those front pieces and some onions. And I found some black, well my husband found some black pots for us. Uh, so those can be our starter pots uh, the next growing season. And about a month ago, this compost was empty. I had emptied it. Uh, did a double coat of paint on the inside and then covered the inside with plastic so that it will last longer. I clean, used all the soil in it and uh, it was a little, you know, starting to, the wood was starting to rot a little bit so I decided to paint it twice, put the plastic so that it will last for a longer period of time. But a month ago that was empty so I mean we've really put a lot of uh, natural garbage in there, leaves and um, grass clippings and lots of vegetable trash and uh, this is a clementine uh, orange tree that we just bought this year and that's going to be its place where it's a little protected hopefully it will do okay and in the very back here by the fence I use bricks to uh, create boxes raised boxes there's about uh, eight of them I think and I have uh, tomatoes and uh, uh, butternut squash and each one of those little things also has one basil planted in with it so that there'll be something to attract uh, the bees to the plants to the tomato plants to the butternut squash plants so that uh, they'll pollinate the flowers and I'll get more fruit uh, and this compost pit is a couple of years old and you can see the, the soil is quite rich and what I do is um, I, I uh, sift it with this uh, ho ho handmade sifter it's a wood frame and um, some painted metal mesh and uh, I sift the soil into my little wagon and then put it on the plants and you know I can see I have some plants filled here and I am doing some seed starting in some of these pots and sometimes if it's a really big pot, I put broken up styrofoam in the bottom and then put soil on the top so the pot's not so heavy for me to move around, especially if I had to move them uh, during a freeze or a frost, something like that. I don't want the pots to be too heavy. And uh, right here where the nectarine tree was, I mean, it's still there, but I have to cut it down. I'm not exactly sure what happened to it, but... Um, it was pretty stressed last year when we had that drought so that might be why it's not alive and uh, down below I have zucchini growing and some parsley and oregano is planted there uh, uh, and basil, basil to attract the bees the oregano is supposed to help ward off bugs I do that companion planting stuff which works great I think and this is one of the spearmint beds and there's another one over there. I chop the spearmint down about once a month. And this time I really chopped it down. So it'll take a good month for that to grow back to where I can use it again. And we got the citrus. And that's a African basil somebody gave me last year. It, You can't reseed it. Supposedly it, uh, it doesn't come back true to its nature. So you're supposed to bring it in or bring cuttings in every winter and then plant it again. So I just brought the whole plant in. And you can see it's April, and I mean, it's huge. And I've cut it back and cut it back and cut it back and cut it back. Quite a sturdy plant. And uh, hibiscus. 
in this center bed I have lots of uh, flowers planted but I also have uh, celery and basil and peppers and tomatoes and even some okra planted mixed in amongst all the flowers we'll see how that does and lettuce you can see lettuce and I have lots of herbs too I like mixing the herbs in like that's savory there with the calanchos and you know the tomato oh peppers boy they grew a lot just last night it rained last night and um, <clears throat> snow blanket and esperanzas and native plants supposed to do well in Texas sage Mexican heather ruella that tall plant just lots port a lock on the so lots of different colors and there's some more lettuce okay so now let's go back for the beds okay this first bed is what do I have in here I told you companion companion planting and French and test of intensive are the two things I looked up on the internet and learned a lot about how to plant a lot of plants in a small space and also um, using vertical planting the French intensive uses vertical planting this is uh, cucumbers here and you can see this rope that they're on I saw that on YouTube a guy was using you, you stake the plant at the bottom and you use a, a rope to um, like a trellis to have the plant climb up the rope I saw him doing it with tomato plants I thought it was just a cool idea so I tried it with these cucumbers it works and you can see I did it with a lot of the plants in the garden uh, this has in it a f uh, okra on the ends and uh, celery I did have bok choy in there and there's a basil on either end to attract the bees I had bok choy in there but it was so bug ridden I just can't be bothered with plants that are that buggy so I just pulled them all out and threw them away this is uh, this one has uh, beets celery Chinese greens savory to keep bugs away from the beans these are foot long beans growing up the trellis just getting started and uh, basil on each end and oh an oak or two in there it's a lot I might have to move some of that eventually I don't know and this one has uh, some Chinese greens celery carrots beets and um, peas sugar daddy peas we'll see how that I've never done those before that's what it's a short trellis they only grow about two feet high from what I understand got a little lettuce there on the corner and celery and basil both of these both of these uh, boxes right here have in them le uh, carrots in the front celery lettuce all different kinds of lettuce uh, kale and beets and I just planted okra in this front box I put three I moved three into this front box um, the lettuce you can see the lettuce right there it's beautiful mescaline mix and over here let's see if I can pull this back a little bit I usually put the greens the uh, I put the carrot greens down so that the uh, lettuce can get more light but I don't know how the lettuce even though it's heat wave lettuce sold by burpee I'm not sure how it's going to do when it really does get hot because our summers are so hot so this front box is an experiment I planted three okra there and uh, that would give shade and we'll see which bed does better and over here I've got, still got my little planting boxes they're pretty much empty because all of that stuff's in the garden now and right here the atrium is my shadow uh oh the sun's coming up the atrium has in it um, parsley going from uh, left to right parsley uh, rosemary Greek oregano Cuban oregano rosemary started from seed and then in this very front right is the thyme so that that was one of the first things I did in the garden I think that really I just like that a lot it's really pretty uh, spearmint in a pot which I'm going to pot up and give to other people because I already got too much spearmint in the ground uh, lavender the rosemary is still doing real fine right there and you can see I'm going to flash back over to the square you can see you know I was showing you different plants I have kale growing there and uh, parsley I love parsley and here I planted the dewberries and there are, I have a trellis to grow up the middle and then on the outside I have some 
lettuce and some other vegetables peppers on the ends you know to use up the space because the dewberries really just need the center spot the center space that's what I like about that French intensive gardening and here is tomato plants and you can see they're growing up those ropes I just thought that was the coolest thing you know a great way to have uh, you know to keep, keep kind of keep the plants organized so you can see and help them to grow straight and not be hanging on the ground where bugs can eat them and also in here I just yesterday really picked this down this bed there's parsley and beet greens I use them for a uh, green drink and basil on the end peppers on either side and also okra and this one is romaine lettuce in the front tomatoes growing up the ropes in the back and a uh, little parsley mixed in there and basil and a couple of pepper plants I've kind of spread the pepper plants and the okra around instead of just putting them all in one bed this year and uh, this because last year I had a bed for okra, a bed for par uh, peppers but I'm spreading them around to see if they'll do better uh, like that mixed up around in, in the garden and this is uh, okay let me think spaghetti squash and you can see it's really doing a good job growing up those ropes so here's the ropes so this one is further along and you can see it's just really I think it's a great idea I sure hope it uh, continues to work and I have lettuce and parsley planted back here oregano to ward off the bugs and this next one down is just getting started that's cantaloupe they have ropes partial to grow up I gotta put a few more ropes on there and parsley and kale and that's it in that bed and ooh bright sun let me get a different perspective here this is the square you can see the different plants as I'm walking along interesting variety I tried to get a variety of textures and that kale tree is still here but I'm getting ready to chop that down interesting variety of textures and colors which that's what I think really makes up the garden and there's the spearmint citrus have a tomato plant and basil growing in that pot more citrus there's passion flowers in those end little towers those little wrought iron towers uh, bought a plum tree this year see how this does and in at the base is some basil planted directly around the tree Four different kinds, I think, is uh, this year I have, uh, uh, let's see, Italian basil, spicy globe, bush basil, Thai basil, and lemon basil. That's five. I have five types of basil in the yard this year. And these plants are strawberry plants. They were growing on the ground. They weren't doing so good. So what I did was I made uh, thin little, like, window boxes with no bottom out of uh, uh, the uh, landscape timbers for the end piece standing up straight and boards cedar boards fence boards and it seems to be working real well and uh, the strawberries are growing real nice none of them are rotting and then this is the uh, grape vine that I just bought last year and it had one little bunch last year which I lost to bugs and I hope some of these I this one has I don't know maybe like 10 clusters of grapes on there. I hope it comes to fruition with garlic chives in the bottom to keep the bugs away. That's a citrus. Back here in these little planter boxes, I have different things. There's tomatoes in this one. This is a, I need to stake that one up on a string. That's a loofah sponge gourd plant. Bougainvilleas, more tomatoes, a few ornamentals. The fig tree is growing quite nicely this year. And I planted oregano underneath. I've read that barrage, which I've never even seen that plant, uh, is supposed to be really good with uh, fig trees. So I'm going to have to see if I can get my hands on some of that herb. And tomatoes. And I think that's pretty much it. That's the whole garden. So, uh, happy gardening. Peace, love. From Mo, your amateur Houston gardener in Houston, Texas, USA.